Hello, geometry class, and welcome to chapter 10, section one, the circle. So what you hopefully found on Google Classroom was a copy of these notes that were already filled in for you. So even though it says carefully read the section and read the sample problems and complete this worksheet as you read, well, guess what? Welcome to e-learning. All of this stuff is already filled in for you. So just a couple of things that I want to go over with you. Make sure that you're familiar with. Hopefully the first couple of definitions you're familiar with. It's this thing here, the distance from the center of a circle to a chord. <clears throat> so H is the center. IJ is the chord. Remember, distances are always measured at a right angle. So if I want to find the distance, I'm going to draw in a perpendicular from H to IJ. And that is going to be how we measure a distance. And what I hope this brings to mind is if we draw in right angles, <clears throat> connecting the radii here would create right triangles. And we just did a whole section on right triangle geometry. So you can imagine a lot of that stuff is going to come in when we look at circles and we have to draw in radii. <clears throat> so please also keep that as a hint when in doubt in this section, draw in a radius. That is going to be a big help. Okay, so there are three theorems from section 10.1, and in a little bit, I am going to go through what those theorems are, um, but let's use those three theorems above to answer the questions below. So what must be true about OF and AB? OF and a b well if o is the center and i see a bisector here that means that o f must make a right angle to a b okay and that comes from theorem 75 if a radius bisects a chord then it's perpendicular to that chord what's what must be true about c d and e d c d and e d well here i have a segment that goes from the center to the chord and makes a right angle. Well, if I make a right angle, then according to theorem 74, if a radius is perpendicular to, to a chord, then it bisects it. We should know that CD and ED are congruent to each other. Where is O in relation to line HG, not line segment? It's obviously not on line segment HG, but HG is a segment that is a perpendicular bisector and the perpendicular bisector of a chord must pass through the center of the circle. That's theorem 76. So that's why the answer to number 12 is O is on line HG. Okay, <clears throat> so let's take a look at the theorems that come from your textbook. Um, I do not have a smart board in front of me. This is my laptop and I am in uh, my house right now. So the best thing I can do is like, write with my finger, and I don't even know if I can write with my finger. There we go. See, it is not very neat if I write with my finger. So uh, I will try my best to do this without writing too much. <clears throat> so the theorem says that if a radius is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord. Okay, well, how can we prove this? Well, the first thing that we should probably try to do is take my advice. Remember, everything I say is golden take my advice and draw in the radii right there, AO and BO. Okay, so if I draw in those radii, AO and BO, hopefully you remember all radii in a circle are congruent. So those two sides are going to be congruent to each other. Obviously, OE is congruent to itself. Oh, this is going to be tricky. OE is congruent to itself. And we have right triangles. So by the HL theorem, the two triangles are congruent to each other. And that means by CPCTC, AE and BE are gonna be congruent, which makes OD uh, a bisector of AB. So that's theorem 74. Theorem 75 says, well, if I'm a bisector, then I'm also perpendicular. Okay, same idea. We are going to draw in the radii like, and, and once again, we could use our reflexive step to say OG is congruent to itself. Of course, all radii congruent because I need two tick marks here. 
So by side, 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 the two triangles are congruent. And then by CPCTC, the adjacent angles here, OGE and OGF are congruent right there and right there. And we know that if adjacent angles in a linear pair are congruent, then they have to be right angles and OF, uh, sorry, OH has to be perpendicular to EF. So that is where that theorem comes from. Theorem 76, uh, it, it actually, the best way to prove it involves a theorem that we didn't look at that's in your textbook that talks about all points that are equidistant from two points on a line segment. So CD, all of the points that are the same distance from C as it is from D will all be on the perpendicular bisector. So if I know that ray PQ is the perpendicular bisector, of uh, CD, then all of the points on there are going to be equidistant. And that includes the center O because we know that CO and DO are congruent to each other. So I'm not really going to go into detail. I guess I kind of did already, but too much detail about why that proof is true. But if you recall, this is how we found the, uh, the center of a, um, or the uh, circumcenter of a triangle. We had three chords and we drew in the perpendicular bisectors of each of the sides. We said the perpendicular bisectors meet at the center. And this is really the theorem that proves that. So we've technically already used theorem 76 without knowing that it was theorem 76. Okay, uh, a couple of examples. The radius of circle O is 13 millimeters and the length of chord PQ is 10 millimeters, find the distance from chord PQ to the center O. Okay, so there are a couple of things that we are going to draw in here. They want to find the distance from the chord to the center. So I guess the first thing we should draw in is the segment whose length we want to find. So if we can find the length of this segment here, put a right angle, we'll call this point X, since X's are kind of easy to draw. Um, OX, we, we want to find the length of OX. It's a distance, and distances are measured at a 90-degree angle. Please keep in mind what I said before. When in doubt, draw in a radius. So I will draw in a radius from O to Q there. And we were told that the radius is 13 millimeters. So there is 13. OK, that's close enough. PQ is given as 10 millimeters. And remember that if I go perpendicular, I'm also a bisector. So that means that XQ has to be five. And although it's poorly drawn, this is a five, 12, 13. So that means that my answer, the length of OX is going to be 12 millimeters. This is a five, 12, 13 right triangle. Please don't forget your Pythagorean triples. They don't just come up in things in chapter nine. They will, we'll see them again all over this chapter uh, and on into area, surface area and volume. And again, in pre-calculus. So don't forget your Pythagorean triples. Okay. Uh, next question. Find the distance from the center of a circle to a chord that's 30 meters long if the diameter is 34. Okay. This is the same question as the last one, just using different numbers. So again, I want to draw in, let's get a different color. Um, I want to draw in the segment whose length I want to find. And I know it makes a right angle because that's how we measure distance. And when in doubt, we draw in a radius. That looks like a pretty color. There we go. Okay, the radius is 34. Maybe you're already thinking about triples. Let's see, what would have a hypotenuse of 34? Hmm, I don't know. Okay, so the the cord is 30 meters long. That's that. And the diameter, oh, wait a minute. The diameter is 34. All right, I'm gonna have to edit this out. Just kidding, that's gonna take way too much time. If the diameter is 34, then that means the radius is 17. I'm gonna bet a few of you already picked up on that. So, all right, so if my radius is 17, this cord gets cut in half, that's 15, 
you guessed it. This is an 8, 15, 17 right triangle. So the distance from the center to the chord is 8 meters. All right. There is one more thing I want to talk about, and that is one of your homework questions tonight. Number 25. It says that two circles intersect and have a common chord. The radius of the circles are 13 and 15, and the distance between their centers is 14. Find the length of the common chord. The key to success in this question is all about setting up the diagram. So if you feel like you can set the diagram up on your own, that that's not gonna be too big of a challenge for you, I encourage you to stop the video here. But if you want a little help, that's okay too. I'm here to provide that. All right, so this is gonna be the center of my first circle, we'll call it P. Uh, this will be the center of my second circle, we'll call it O. And now let's get the circles. So there's circle P. There's circle O, I'll make circle O slightly smaller. So circle O is gonna have the radius of 13, circle P will have the radius of 15. They have a common chord, not to be confused with common core. They don't have that. They do that old math stuff. All right, um, so this is one of the problems with smart notebook, it's not that smart. Let's see if it'll let me actually draw the chord. Okay, that's good enough. So. <clears throat> Um, that green line, that's the common chord. It's a chord for circle P and a chord for circle O. Uh, let's draw in the radius for both of those. Now we can draw in any radius we want, but don't you think it makes a little bit more sense to probably draw in a radius connecting here? We're probably gonna need that, right? We might even need this one too, I, I don't know. Both of these, this is the larger one. I'm calling this a larger one. This is 15. 15. Close enough. Um, and let's draw the one for circle O. Let's make this mm, orange, blue and orange, like the Mets. Who, boy, I wish I was watching them lose right now. And I'm a Mets fan, but... That's just not to be, I suppose. Okay, um, so, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'd much rather be watching the Mets win, but, you know, if I had to watch them lose, at least, at least the world wouldn't be upside down. Okay, so, uh, so that's 13. And the distance between their centers is 14. Hmm, okay. So... The distance from P to Q, like that. Well, not quite like that, because again, Smart Notebook tries to make things exact and it doesn't really work. But you get the picture. Uh, this is 14. So they want the length of the common core. They want the length of that green line segment. I think you should probably think about your Pythagorean triples. And that is my last hint that I'm gonna give you. All right, guys, so why don't you try your homework? And um, if you have any questions, you can email me, you can, I'll, I'll be on uh, chat tomorrow. We can talk about it then, okay? All right, guys, have fun.